Hello and good afternoon, CTS 266, Section 840 students for the Spring 2016 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the CCMP switch course from the Cisco Networking Academy, and we're going to be focusing on tutorial uh, for Lab 8-1, and this is going to be Part 2. In Part 1, we took a look at the IPSLA feature, configured a number of IPSLA um, uh, IPSLA um, operations as well as some IPSLA responder activity and then took a look at UDP jitter um, across a number of switches. So now what we're going to be doing in part two is we're going to be focusing here on RSPAN or Remote Switch Port Analyzer. So remember that there are a couple of different ways that we can collect data uh, from a switch if we wanted to, and I, when I mean data I'm talking about um, uh, not like SNMP type information, but literally packets flowing through interfaces. So SPAN, which is just switch port analyzer, that's one way to do it. And the thing with SPAN is remember that SPAN, you're going to be limited to doing it on the same physical switch. Well, this obviously begs the question, what if I've got a switch that's you know, remotely located somewhere? and I want to pull information off of that remote switch. Well, in order to do that, we would have to do RSPAN, or Remote Switch Port Analyzer. Uh, and the way that we do that uh, is we have to have trunk links between the switches. It simply just can't be sort of an extension of the broadcast domain where we're plugging in, you know, you know VLAN 5 and then just stretching VLAN 5 using a number of switches. It's got to be a trunk link and we're going to need to bring a VLAN into play and that VLAN is going to be dedicated to doing nothing uh, but providing that RSPAN functionality. So here's what we're going to do. I actually have a host here uh, that we're going to use and let me make sure I get this password in here correct. And it's our MacBook and I actually have uh, Wireshark running on this MacBook here and this is going to be the host that we use to do our packet capture. So we're in part three here on lab 8-1 on step one and we'll come back to uh, that MacBook here. So what we're going to do is on DLS uh, W01, this is our VTP server. So we're going to go into global config and we're going to say VLAN and we're going to use VLAN 300 and that is going to be our remote span VLAN. Now one key thing that we need to remember is since we're using it for remote span we need to tell the switches that are going to pick this VLAN up that that is the purpose of this VLAN. So we're going to say remote span. So again, we need to make sure that we tell it that it's going to be functioning as a remote span VLAN. So if I was to say, do show VLAN brief, uh, do we see VLAN 3? And actually, let me go ahead and end and write, get out of VLAN config mode. And now we will see it. So we're going to say show VLAN, whoops, show VLAN brief. And there is our remote, sorry, there is our remote span VLAN. Let's make sure that ALSW01 and 02 have picked this up. Show VLAN brief. All right, remote span is there. And let's see over here. Show VLAN brief. And the remote span VLAN is there. Okay, good. So everything looks great. We've got the remote span VLAN. So now what we need to do is we've got to configure our source monitor session and then we're going to sort of configure the um, destination monitor session. All right, so we've got VLAN 300 on ALS. and now in the lab it's going to show you to do it on one and two, uh, but my MacBook is actually the one that has Wireshark is on ALSW02. So I'm going to do this backwards, but we're going to end up with the same results. So I'm going to come over here to ALSW02 and we're going to go into global config mode. And I'm going to say monitor session one source. Oops, sorry. Source interface is going to be FA 106. And again, uh, that's the other MacBook in the environment. And then we're going to say monitor session one destination. Now the destination is just simply the remote VLAN, right? The VLAN that we're working with uh, for remote span is 300. So if I were to say do show monitor. There we go. So we've got a remote source session. Uh, the source port is FA106, and that is the, um, we'll say it's MacBook 2 or MacBook 1. Uh, and 
then we've got uh, the Destination R Span VLAN. All right, so now let's go ahead on the opposite side on ALS, and actually, yeah, on ALS 01, and let's go ahead and go into global config. Now, ALS 01, this is going to be the one that we send uh, all of our packets to, and this is the one we've got the protocol analyzer running, Wireshark is running here. So we're going to say monitor session one, oops, sorry, yeah, monitor session one, and we'll say source remote VLAN 300, right? And then monitor session one destination interface FA 106. So again, whoops. So what did we just do here? So we set it up so that the source, right, we are looking, remember, ALSW01 has the Wireshark host. And so it is going to monitor via session one the source remote VLAN 300. So I'm going to be looking at that VLAN so that I can get the information uh, from that VLAN and get it into my packet analyzer. Now, um, let's make sure here that, because I'm doing this backwards, so I want to make sure that uh, we've got everything right. The source port, remote span VLAN 300, the destination ports engineering client FA06. All right, we're going to get both transmit and receive traffic. Um, okay, so that should be it. Okay, that should be it. So all the traffic from VLAN 300 now is going to be mirrored to FA06. Now let's go ahead and let's test it out. So we've got Wireshark up and running here. Or we did a second ago. Where is my... All right, so we've got Wireshark up and running. So let's go ahead and say capture interfaces EN0. So that is the interface that we're using right now. And why does it show EN1? Give me a second here. Let me see. Let's make sure we're on the right interface. And come on there, terminal. All right, so we're checking here. EN1 is definitely not the interface. That's the wireless interface. We're using EN0. All right, so we're going to take a look at EN1 here. Whoops. And we're going to say start. And so here's what it wants us to do. We want to initiate a ping. And let's go ahead and say continue without saving. So you can see we've got some echo requests and echo replies that we're seeing here. So we want to initiate a ping from, from uh, PCA uh, to the 172.16.99.102, or we can open a web browser. So let's see here, because I believe we've got a web browser here. And let's try to go to, let's see if we see any traffic here, HTTP, and we're going to go to... Um, 172.16.99.1. So we're going to try to go to DLS01. And we've got these ping packets flying back and forth, but oops, sorry. HTTP slash slash. So we may get prompted. I don't think we've got the HTTP package running. And I'm not actually seeing the packets for that. Uh, let me do this. Let me pause. And they want us to do... The, well, actually, let's try this. So from ALSW02, because I can't get to the other MacBook. It's actually in a different room. So let's do this. We'll say ping 172.16.100.101. And we'll do do ping. And so we're not having any luck there. And then from DLS1, if we said ping one, you know what? Let me pause this. I think that other MacBook may have gone to sleep mode. Hold on one second. All right, so we've got uh, the MacBook running here. Let's go ahead and say capture stop. Let's scroll back. The other MacBook was asleep, unfortunately. And there we go. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. All right, so the other MacBook fell asleep. 
and went into sleep mode. So I brought it back online and initiated an HTTP request. And so let's take a look. So we've got the source address here, the 172.16.200.101, and it was going to 172.16.99.1. So, and again, that was the HTTP GET. So I was trying to get the web page to come up off of the DLS W01 switch. Unfortunately, uh, that switch is not running, doesn't have the um, HTTP software on there. And you can see I entered in the incorrect username and password here. So if I were to blow this up, whoops, make this a little larger here to the full screen, uh, you can see that we can see all the TCP information, the source port, 80 destination port, and this is coming back to us because it's denying uh, us access because we entered in the wrong password. So again, uh, good to see that the remote span session worked, right? Because this traffic that we're looking at here, this was generated uh, and it's plugged into ALSW02. We are sniffing off of that remote span VLAN on ALSW01 but we still get the information because of the remote span VLAN 300. And if we were doing other pings, we would see that information as well. Uh, but again, this 172.16.200.101, uh, that is the MacBook plugged into ALSW02, uh, not even on the same switch that we are in. So we were lucky enough here to pick up these HTTP requests and to see that the packet capture will work. All right. So this can come in very, very handy when you're doing troubleshooting or uh, maybe some implementation testing to see what is the traffic going to look like. Uh, and that is it. So this is going to wrap up part two of lab 8-1, where we talked about switch port analyzer or the span feature. And we configured a remote span session uh, leveraging two different switches, two different MacBooks, uh, and Wireshark. And again, Wireshark is 100% free, so you can download that for free. And it's a great tool to play with to see inside uh, of the packets what's actually going on. There was some, uh, yeah, you can see all the HTTP information we have here uh, that we were getting. All right, well, that wraps that up. Be ready to use Packet Tracer and, uh, I'm sorry, be ready to use Wireshark on uh, Monday night. I will see you guys on Monday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.